One of my YouTube subscribers from America commented recently that my images always seem to convey the third dimension, had incredible depth. Now, until he mentioned this, this is something I'd never thought about when taking the picture. Should we say it was part of my soul? And in preparing this program, especially with the YouTube format, which is 16 times 9 landscape, it's not easy when you're conscious about it in creating depth to the picture. Anyway, I've had a go, so see what you think of the program. A simple trick in landscape photography for creating depth in a two-dimensional image is to include a strong foreground or lead-in, such as a road or path, directing the eye to a focal point. But I had better not stay here too long. Strong diagonals also help. A common mistake when taking landscapes is to leave out the foreground. Stand back and include it, and suddenly the view acquires the missing dimension. But as we shall see, there are benefits by getting in close. A view without a foreground looks two-dimensional especially with a telephoto lens because it contracts perspectives. A wide-angle optic does the opposite, and an extreme wide-angle exaggerates the perspective so much that distant views almost disappear into obscurity. But some compositions, given the right material, are effective. For this reason, I consider a zoom over the mid-range to be the best single optic for landscapes for the widest possible scope. Now here we have the classic lead-in, with the river sweeping diagonally across the image, framed by a foreground bush left and a rising bank right, the two people adding scale. Telephotos emphasize detail, but we lose the third dimension, unless we zoom out back to wide angle. We get a similar result with the rainbow, and whilst the wide angle shot has greater depth, I was careless about showing too much water. Should have got down on my knees and included more of the foreground. Now this view I have passed many times. The tree adds the third dimension, but by getting in a little closer, I have kept the tree in shot. For sharpness throughout, I have used the hyperfocal distance, that is, to manually focus about one-third into the image. The diagonal presentation of the river also helps to create depth. The symmetry of this telephoto shot with the hillsides dropping down to the lock help the third dimension. I'm sorry to say that what looks like mist is in fact smoke. For this telephoto shot, the vertical presentation of the road adds the third dimension. Shortly afterwards, sheep were herded up the road. Now for this second shot, 
I turn the camera around 90 degrees to portrait orientation, which I think works better. Telephotos emphasize patterns, here shadows, and they look attractive in their own right. For comparison, here is the wide-angle shot from the same spot. Zooming towards telephoto for Lincoln Cathedral is an example of the perspective flattening so much that it has no depth, but it is the perfect composition for the dull day. On a plateau, depth can be added with a path leading the eye to the distant view, and the architecture of certain buildings can also add depth. This church view has tremendous depth, helped by railings left and right, the floor pattern and the image's symmetry, enhanced by a bit of PowerPoint tweaking in the presentation. Repeated patterns in a church roof give the impression of depth, especially when leading to a focal point, and here more subtly with projected patterns leading the eye into the distance not to mention the glory of soaring heights of a cathedral roof. It will be appreciated that the lens, be it wide-angle or telephoto, changes the perspective, and for depth, a standard or wide-angle prime or zoom does the best job. Maintaining sharpness is important, and whilst there is something to be said for an out-of-focus foreground, Micro Four Thirds give more depth field at any aperture or focal length setting, most compact cameras and smartphones even more than other larger formats, where a knowledge of the hyperfocal distance is more important to keep overall sharpness a traditional technique that no reliance on computerization can ever teach.